We're now going to talk about the chemistry of how we make biodiesel. Remember, biodiesel is different from straight vegetable oil because we now are going to chemically modify the oil so that we can run it in a diesel engine unmodified. That's the key. We don't want to tweak with the fuel system. We don't want to add a second tank. We don't want to mess with all that. We just want to make a fuel that we can put right in a diesel engine and drive away, which is the beauty of biodiesel. So let's talk about how we're going to do this. First of all, earlier we said that all oils in nature have this little funny thing called a triglyceride. So I'm going to do triglyceride. Okay. What it's made up of is a glycerin molecule and what are called fatty acid chains. And I'm going to just call them FACs here. They are bonded to this molecule chemically. Our goal is to change this and make it thinner. This is a fairly large molecule. In fact, so large that when it gets cold, it can turn into a solid brick. Well, I bet if we remove or thin that down a little bit, we can make it much more viscous, like this. Notice how runny this is, okay? So let's talk about how we're gonna do it. The basic theory behind it is we're gonna take oil, where they're gonna add some methanol. Methanol is just standard methyl alcohol. If I walk into Walmart, I can get a bottle of heat. Well, if you look on the back, if you get the yellow bottle, it says methyl alcohol, so it's just straight methanol. We're also gonna add something called a catalyst, and the catalyst can be something such as lye or potassium hydroxide, uh, commonly called caustic potash. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. These three items, plus some heat, plus some mixing, are going to allow me to chemically modify this molecule. Here's what happens. I throw in some methanol, and I throw in some catalyst, and the catalyst comes into this little bugger, and he comes in and he cuts those bonds. And he allows the methanol to come in behind it and bond to the fatty acid chains. And so now what I get is I'm going to have a glycerin blob and I'm going to get some fatty acid chains that are going to be connected to methanol. Now, they aren't methanol when they're done. It's chemically different. Just like when I put an egg in a cake batter and I mix that cake up, I don't have an egg afterwards. It's chemically different. So don't be worried that we're going to be putting methanol in your diesel vehicle. It's, it's a chemically different substance when we're done. That's important, okay? So what I get when we're done with this is I'm going to have some glycerin. And I'm going to have three fatty acid chains connected to some methanol. The technical term for this, which really doesn't matter, but some people like to know about it, is called transesterification transesterification, okay? That's the process of moving from this to that. They also came up with some really geeky words for what we call biodiesel as well. Its technical name is fatty acid. This part. Methyl, after the methanol. Ester. If any of you remember your chemistry from high school, you know that you can esterify different oils. We have esterified a triglyceride into fatty acid methyl ester. Okay? For those of you that are chemistry experts, I'm sorry if I bummed that up, but this is the basic premise behind what we did. So we now made three molecules, we actually made four different molecules out of one. Three of them are thinner, and one is a little bit gloopy. Okay, we're going to pause for a second. I'm going to clean the board off. And we're going to come back in a moment. We're back and we're going to talk a little bit more about what we just mentioned. Remember we said that we chemically altered our triglyceride into three new substance, three new items and a glycerin, okay? So we quite literally have taken glycerin and removed it from the fatty acid chains and we've attached methanol. Fatty acid methyl ester equals biodiesel. 
that's its technical term. And so what happens when we do this chemical reaction is glycerin is now heavier than the fatty acid methyl esters, and so it falls down to the bottom. And so you're now left with a bunch of fatty acid methyl esters in here, or biodiesel. So we take oil, we add some methanol, we add some lye, and what we get out of it is this. I don't know if you can pan in real close and see that, but we literally have modified this fuel. Notice as I tip this, the glycerin is really kind of thick, kind of like syrup. Well, guess what? That's where that thick part of the fuel came from. You can't see it because this is so clear up here, but my biodiesel is really nice and runny. Notice how much runnier that is than my oil. That's the difference in and why we can use it in a diesel engine is because we've made it runnier. We've literally thinned it out chemically. Now there's not excess methanol or anything like that in here. I've literally taken an egg and I've making a cake. It's a completely different substance. Um, a little bit about biodiesel. <clears throat> it is um, 10 times less toxic than table salt, 10 times more biodegradable than table sugar, it can reduce your particulate emissions, that's that black smoke we all like coming out of our tailpipe, by up to 92%. It can reduce our CO2 levels, which are the nice uh, greenhouse gases that people like to rave and rant about, about global warming and such, by up to 60%. It can reduce hydrocarbons by up to 80%. So you have this incredible fuel that we've thinned out, we've made it from an organic item that we can put in our diesels, it'll quiet the diesels down, um, and it, it quiets them down quite a bit. So if you like the really loud, noisy diesels, I'm sorry. If you're going to use biodiesel, it's going to quiet them down. It's, it's basically lubricating a little bit and the flash points higher for those that are wanting to be technical. And we're going to get a lot less smoke. But let me tell you what that means for performance. The fastest diesel in the world uses biodiesel in a 20% blend because on a torque curve or on the performance curve, the sweet spot is right at 20% biodiesel and 80% diesel fuel. <clears throat> what that allows you to do is run hotter. You run your turbo higher, you get lower EGTs because the fuel burns cooler, and you're going to get a lot better burn, and you can push that engine harder. Plus, it's better for the engine. So those are some of the benefits of running biodiesel. Okay. Now, let's talk about what can go wrong. This is the theory of biodiesel and how it's made, but now I want to tell you what the real world is. We'll do that in a second.